I'm going to explain as quickly as possible, step-by-step, step, how to become a quantum engineer working in quantum computing. My name is Ari. I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM Quantum, and I work on scaling qubit control electronics. We can actually one day build a quantum computer that's actually going to be useful for this world. So I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible, what you can do step-by-step step to eventually become a quantum engineer one day, because we need quantum engineers if we're ever going to build a quantum computer that's actually useful. Okay, the setup is you're going to study electrical or computer engineering, because electrical and computer engineering are by far the most practical adaptable and safest choice for your career. No matter if you go into quantum computing or not, you will pretty much always have a job in some sort of technological field if you do electrical or computer engineering. In addition, electrical engineering is generally more phys physics focused, which is helpful for quantum computing. Next, you're going to want to attend a university that has quantum research. And there's actually tons of universities out there right now that have quantum research. And they're not just Ivy Leagues. There's honestly a lot of really great state schools that are inexpensive and are pretty good schools, have lots of opportunity that do quantum research. So if you are not attending a university that has quantum research, you should transfer. Um, and if you are applying right now, you should apply for ones that only have quantum research programs. Okay, that's the setup. The next step is starting to develop skills, and these are kind of the most important things for your career is what skills you have. So number one, when you get to university, you're going to start the Quantum Computing Club if it does not already exist, or you are going to try to like get some leadership position in the Quantum Computing Club. And the reason why this is important is for building a network with people who are already in quantum computing. Number two, and most importantly, it's to develop your communication skills. And communication is quite literally the most underrated skill for any scientist or engineer out there. And your communication skills are going to be what gets you a job, are going to be what gets you a success in your interview, and they're going to advance and amplify your impact as a scientist and an engineer. Because if you cannot communicate your technical findings to the world, it's almost as though you would never did it in the first place, right? Okay, the next thing, and this is arguably the most important thing, is gaining technical skills in electrical and computer engineering. And these are the technical skills that are actually gonna make you useful as a quantum engineer. And so part of this is just taking your courses, but another part is figuring out exactly what you like to do and how that applies to quantum computing. Then next, you're going to want to gain some element of quantum skills. So you're going to want to take some of your elective coursework in quantum. And that's why this is important that your university has some quantum computing research is because there's probably going to be courses taught by some of the faculty along the lines of quantum physics and quantum information and quantum computing and just maybe a dedicated course on quantum engineering for that matter too. So ultimately, you're going to start developing your skills, communication skills, technical skills and quantum skills, and then you're gonna leverage those skills to get your first quantum experience, right? You're gonna start gaining XP, like in video games where you gain experience to gain up levels. It's exactly what we're doing here. So once you have basically enough skills XP to get your first quantum experience, you're gonna to try to join a quantum lab. And again, this is why you have to attend a university that has quantum computing research. Okay, so you're gonna join a quantum lab. This is gonna be your first experience. And honestly, quantum is so competitive right now that you basically have to have some experience in quantum um, if you wanna ever like get an actual job. So the easiest way to do this is to join a research lab in quantum computing using and leveraging your technical skills in standard engineering and the quantum skills that you have started to develop and your communication skills on you know, writing a cold email and interviewing and networking with people to actually get this position. Then once you have some experience in quantum, you're going to try to pick a niche in quantum. And what this basically means is you are understanding how you can apply your technical skills in electrical and computer engineering to quantum computing. And so that's when you pick your niche. And the only way that you're gonna ever understand that is if you have some sort of experience working in a quantum research lab and you actually understand what it's like to work in quantum computing, what quantum computing really is. Like you can have an idea of what you wanna do over here during your setup, like when you're just like picking schools and whatever, but you don't actually understand what it's like to work in the lab and what challenges exist in quantum computing until you have that experience in the first place. Okay. Now, this is where you kind of gain like your final levels, like your advanced experience. Okay, so once you have your niche, and you like you know how to apply your technical skill to quantum computing, you're going to gain advanced technical skills in your electrical and computer engineering by taking like advanced classes, or maybe even doing an electrical engineering internship at some point. Um, don't just like take easy classes, take stuff that's actually relevant in the skills that you enjoy doing and the skills that are valuable to quantum computing. Then, in addition to the relevant technical skills, you're going to want to acquire relevant quantum skills. So relevant quantum skills 
might not be Qiskit. It might not be quantum algorithms. It might not be linear algebra. It might not be all that weird, crazy math that has to go into quantum applications and algorithms. So you don't necessarily have to know that stuff because if it's not relevant to your quantum niche, don't spend time doing it. However, here's another example. Let's say you want to be a firmware developer for somebody who um, writes the firmware for the control electronics for quantum error correction. Then maybe you should learn a little bit about a quantum error correction, but that's why it's important to define your niche, which is based off of your experience in quantum. Okay, so then you're going to leverage these, your advanced technical skills and advanced quantum skills to get like an advanced opportunity, your next opportunity. So your next job, your internship, your summer research, whatever that is, it could, it could be doing more research at your original lab. It could be going and doing another research at another lab. I would recommend doing something different. Don't just stay in the same lab, like get a, get some sort of internship in either electrical engineering or in quantum computing, do a summer research at a national lab or some other university, and then you just keep iterating. This is an iterative process. You just keep grinding, keep getting XP, keep getting XP until you are experienced enough to take on the final boss. Okay, and the final boss is basically getting a full-time job, applying, interviewing, that kind of stuff. And if you are smart, you'll probably try to get a return offer at one of your internships or um, you know, maybe a full-time position at like a, a research that you research lab that you did some research at or something like that. But if you don't find success, what you can always do and you might find that you actually want to do this to do more advanced things is you just join a master's program in electrical engineering, computer engineering, computer science and then return to the start. Right. So then make sure your master's degree is at a university that has quantum research and then you just go through this thing again. OK, so that's how to become a quantum engineer in about six minutes and 40 seconds. If you are actually serious about becoming a quantum engineer and you want to become a quantum engineer and you want more personalized guidance and like how to do each one of these steps, click the top link in the description below. I literally help you do that. and You're going to join a community of people who want to do this exact same thing. So click the top link in the description. Uh, take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. It's going to end in seven minutes. Goodbye.